reconnect with nature, reprogram your brain, regain your freedom, rebuild your life. This is Brain Shaman, the ultimate brain mastery podcast. I'm Michael Waite, your host and guide on this quest towards better brain health. This is episode number two. Love the food that loves you back. That's one of Dr. Daniel Amen's favorite phrases, and I'm stealing it because he's absolutely right. Stop looking at food as just pleasure or entertainment. Start looking at it for what it really is, information that is physically and mentally building what you will become. It is the software that becomes the hardware, the creatures that become the forest, the experiences that become your life. This is no laughing matter. Your relationship with food is just as or more important perhaps than any other relationship in your life. You wouldn't, I hope, stay with someone who consistently, every time you meet them, both physically and mentally abuses you. You would get out of that relationship because you know you're going to experience the pain not just now, but repeatedly again, again in the future. It's also going to gradually make you a worse person yourself. Like Jim Rohn says, you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Likewise, you are the average of the foods that you spend the most time with. So be picky. Choose the right food buddies. Make sure they really care about you, are honest, and work together with you in alignment with who you truly want to become. Yet these food buddies, brain buddies, can be both fun and loving, delicious and nutritious. These are not your babes and bros from the bar. They're straight up marriage material. And you can and should marry lots of them. I'm not promoting polygamy, even though I did grow up Mormon. Uh, I I had to go there. Um, But I am promoting food polygamy. Your brain, your future deserves it. Let's now reveal 10 of the foods that your brain should marry. Foods that your brain absolutely loves. This list is neither by any means exhaustive nor in any particular order. It's just something to get you started with. Think of these foods as potential mates with highly proven track records, matched via AI and genetics specifically to you, the human organism. Each person is, of course, unique, and so it's possible that you do not get along with all of these foods. Just go out on a date, give them a try, and see how they make you feel. If they love you and you love them back, keep seeing them, keep eating them, maybe even marry them. In order to To keep this episode somewhat short, I'm going to try to resist getting into too many of the nitty-gritty details of each food, though, to be honest, I might not be able to help myself. I really don't think I will be able to. This stuff is just way too exciting. Today is more of a zoomed-out perspective, practical, quick, action-based plan. We'll zoom in a bit today, but do most of that later. First, we should get the general bird's-eye view. So, without further ado, here they are. Bachelor number one. He's tall, he's green, and he looks like a tree. He's got a big head, so must be really smart. He enjoys long walks on the beach and playing in the dirt. They call him Mr. B. His name is Brock Lee. (laughs) Okay, I had to do that. I couldn't stop myself. So, uh, time to get serious, though. Brock Lee, along with all the other cruciferous veggies, including cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, cabbage, especially the purple kind, Bok choy and kale are packed full of something called glucuronephanin. I don't know if I'm saying it right even. Which your body then turns into sulforaphane. Sounds like sulfur, right? Yeah, that's basically what it is. And what is sulfur good for? Well, it's the third most abundant mineral in your body and fifth most abundant on Earth. And remember, we need to stop separating brain and overall bodily health from Earth health. We're all in this together. So what's good for the planet is also good for you, usually. While sulfur is often used in harmful products such as fertilizer, insecticides, fungicides, and not to mention often stinks, your body needs it. It, for one, reduces inflammation, the cause of basically every disease and health condition that we know of, and it neutralizes toxins. It's interesting how something that 
helps create fire in the outside world. Remember, sulfur is an ingredient in matches, fireworks, and volcanic eruptions. Helps put out the fires inside your own body, inside your own brain. Neuroinflammation is likely a major culprit in many brain disorders, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ADHD, autism, multiple sclerosis. The, the list goes on. And even before such big disasters strike, it's responsible for a lot of that nasty brain fog and lack of focus and energy that you often feel. That's not ever normal. That shouldn't be normal at any age. That's your brain inflamed, your body burning down. One way to help calm those flames and bring you back to normal brain function is to eat more cruciferous vegetables such as broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and all that. Another useful hack is broccoli sprouts. They may be tiny, but they are mighty. They pack in 10 to 100 times more glucorophanin than actual broccoli. Most foods in this group also contain a lot of vitamin K, which is needed for blood clotting, so you don't bleed to death, and building bones. Hey, you might be saying, I, I thought this podcast was about brain health. Why are we getting into health in general? But just as the earth is a single organism, so too is your body. It's an interconnected system. Every part affects the rest. Nothing exists in an isolated bubble. Bad body, bad brain. Eat your vitamin K. In itself, it has also been shown to reduce cognitive decline. Cruciferous veggies also contain a lot of other vitamins, minerals, and other things, among which I have to make a mention, fiber. You're going to hear a lot about this stuff. And cruciferous veggies are packed full of it. Why is fiber important, particularly prebiotic fiber? It feeds the good bacteria in your gut. That's their favorite food source. It's what helps them grow and flourish. Most healthy people have trillions of bacteria living inside of them. You are more bacteria than you are human from a pure number standpoint. Keep your good bacteria happy, feed them well, and they will keep you more than happy. Neglect to take care of them and you have a horror movie living inside of you. You know, it's like a talk of the killer bacteria. <laughs> feed your gut bacteria the food that loves them back and they will also in turn feed their friends, their buddies, your mitochondria, the energy powerhouses of your cells. Increasing the number of and functioning of your mitochondria is one of the best strategies for increasing your overall energy. So fiber does a lot more than just help you go poop. Of course, poop itself is like 30% dead bacteria, so it's not a coincidence. Anyway, uh, if that didn't make you lose your appetite, let's just get on to brain food number two onions and garlic, which are more generally part of the allium family, which also includes shallots, leeks, and chives. Like the cruciferous veggies, they are also great sources of fiber. Your gut bacteria munch on them, ultimately leading to a high-powered brain. Like good people, good foods also share a lot of the same character traits with each other. So you won't be surprised to hear that foods like garlic and leeks also help reduce inflammation. Garlic has about 33 sulfur-containing compounds, allicin being perhaps the most famous, and we discussed earlier these help fan the flames and irritation in your brain and throughout your body. Sulfur is not the only, not by any means, anti-inflammatory compound. There are also omega-3s, curcumin, and lots of other things. Garlic has also been shown to increase memory and cognitive performance as well as fight off many illnesses. Make sure to chop it up and let it sit for at least 10 minutes though in order for all that allicin to be released. If you eat it raw, even better. Onions and garlic are also rich in, yep, prebiotic fiber. The vitamin C and flavonoids in onions help protect your brain cells and reduce inflammation. The potassium helps your brain cells operate and communicate better with one another. The B vitamins give you energy and help boost your happy neurochemicals such as serotonin, dopamine, and GABA. You might want to avoid eating them at night though. I've noticed this, as the acidity and gassiness of both onions and garlic can disrupt your sleep. So that's another rule of thumb. Even if the food is generally good for you, if it messes with your sleep or other bigger things, avoid it, or at least consume it only with a, within a certain window 
earlier in the day. This applies not only to onions and garlic, but also things like coffee, cacao, tomatoes, citrus fruits, butter, and peppermint. Uh, these are foods that generally are good for you, but uh, they can disrupt sleep. So anyway, you must protect your sleep and not let food, even healthy food, get in the way. Every body is different, though. Test out how you react to different foods and eat accordingly. If your body disagrees with any of the foods that I'm talking about here, listen to and trust your body. Beyond any book, podcast, expert, or anything, your body is the ultimate source of all knowledge and truth. So let's move on to food number three, fish. Some of the best ones include salmon, sardines, anchovies. Generally, the smaller the better. Fish eggs, such as caviar or salmon roe, are ultimately the best sources of omega-3s. But just add whatever fish into your diet as best as you can. There are some heavy metal toxicity risks associated with the really large fish, the really large species. Tony Robbins once famously and sadly suffered from uh, extreme mercury poisoning from eating too much swordfish and tuna. Overall, still, the benefits of eating fish far outweigh the minuses. Still, this is something to keep in mind and another reason to go for the smaller fish. Not only do they pack in more nutrition, generally, they are less toxic. Oh, this is another rule of thumb, by the way. The baby versions of things are often the best. Vitamin, mineral, brain health, nutrition bombs. Broccoli sprouts, better than broccoli. Eggs, much better than chicken. Fish eggs, better than fish. Baby fish, better than daddy fish. Omega-3s from foods like fish reduce inflammation. Fighting against the omega-6s, which we are getting way too much of, particularly from processed foods, which increase inflammation and bully your gut buddies. Throwing off your microbiome, that lush rainforest inside of you, buzzing with literally trillions of life forms. You are a planet. Congratulations. Don't get thrown out of orbit. Balance out your omega-6 to 3 ratio and balance out your mood. Although I'm not a doctor and none of this is official advice, if you're suffering from depression or bipolar disorder, it might be worth adding some omega-3s into your diet in the form of fish or walnuts or the previously mentioned Brussels sprouts even. This has done wonders for some people. I literally get high off sardines, but right now I'm high on cauliflower. These omega-3 fatty acids, along with other magical things in fish like astaxanthin, Man, there are so many difficult words in here, so I might be pronouncing some of them wrong. Don't get mad at me. Anyway, astaxanthin helps protect and grow your brain cells, also increasing the efficiency of communication between them. You're leveling up your brain in so many ways. And since your brain is about 60% fat, there's a lot of potential leveling up that you can take advantage of here. Max that out. Fish deserve so much more love and discussion. They are one of your brain's best friends. Marry that fish. Marry that fish. Marry. Okay. Um, let's talk about brain food number four, walnuts. I mean, just look at them. Just look at them. They look like brains. So kind of does broccoli, cauliflower, and even eggs and avocado. Do you see it? Walnuts also, get this, are about 65% fat. That's eerily similar to the overall fat composition of the brain itself. Interesting. A lot of these fats that they contain are omega-3s, but it is a plant-based source. So it's the ALA variety, not that premium EPA and DHA that you really can only get from seafood. Seaweed, spirulina, and chlorella are perhaps the only non-fishy sources of the good stuff. EPA and DHA, bro. But while those are great because you're essentially cutting out the middleman, middlefish, but how much of that can you really eat? Still, good news, what omega-3s you do get from foods like walnuts, flax seeds, and chia seeds still technically get converted into EPA and DHA. The bad news this conversion process is very inefficient in humans. Only maybe 10% of it, if you're lucky, gets converted. Fish and other sea-dwelling creatures are much more efficiently designed for that kind of thing. Us slowly humans. Anyway, it's better than nothing, and we can always just eat the fish. Walnuts also contain lots of other important vitamins and minerals, especially vitamin E. Also very important for brain health and a common thread across many of the foods on this list. 
but walnuts are also high in things like folate, zinc, and magnesium. You can never get enough magnesium, the main stress modulating and calming mineral. It's necessary for hundreds and hundreds, and they're discovering more every day of processes in our body, including nerve function and energy production, sleep, regulation of blood pressure and heart rate, and it gets sucked up so quickly. Your body loves it. It needs it. It calms the electrical storm inside of you. This one seemingly small missing ingredient or any other missing ingredient, aka mineral or vitamin, can throw everything off. And you wonder why you're always sick or feeling bad or can't focus, just feel like not yourself. It's like that missing piece of the computer code that completely stops the program from working. Don't worry, you're not going to OD on MG. Walnuts, avocado, greens and beans, greens and beans, and even salmon are pretty good sources of it. But even better are things like pumpkin seeds, sesame seeds, cashews, almonds, spinach, and my absolute favorite, cacao. Okay, this is now way more than 15 foods. What, it's like 100 probably. Should I stop? I can't. Never stop. Never stop. Walnuts and pistachios and almonds. Also, here it comes. Increase the good bacteria in your gut. We now know that the brain and the gut are physically connected. The information that is sent to your brain via the gut depends on what specific species of bacteria are living in there and what they're eating. By feeding the good guys, like when you eat nuts, not peanuts, those are not nuts, you put them in charge of that whole communication system. It's better to get mysterious packages and messages from good guys than from bad guys. Brain food number five. I can't believe I didn't mention this one yet. Oh my God. Olive oil. Ever wonder why those Italians live so long and have five of the world's blue zones? Their generous consumption of olive oil might have something to do with it. Not only is it rich in vitamins A, D, E, and K, it's also packed with antioxidants that decrease inflammation and protect your brain. You can drink it straight from the bottle. That's what I do. Take as many swigs as you want or pour it all over your food. You can drink a liter or more of it a week. Just drink it up. Make sure it's extra virgin, though. You don't want any of that rancid stuff uh, swimming through your body. Anyway, usually it is extra virgin, so you didn't need to worry too much about that. And also, make sure that it comes not in that clear plastic stuff. No, no, no plastic. Make sure it comes in a dark glass bottle. The darker, the glassier, is there such a thing? The better. I know it's more expensive, but it's worth it. Think of it as your alternative to a fancy bottle of wine, but much, much better for you. None of that clear plastic stuff. Remember, the heat and light exposure, not to mention the BPA leaking from the plastic, will damage the oil and your brain. Remember, your brain, being largely made up of fat, loves healthy fats like this. Unlike a lot of other oils out there, the process for making olive oil is very simple. You just squeeze the oil from the olives, basically. It doesn't usually go through any weird chemical or heating processes. In general, the fewer steps and ingredients involved in the production of your food, the better it is for you. Another rule of thumb. It's no surprise then that most of the foods on this list come directly from nature, existing way before factories were even invented, and sometimes even predating humans. For example, while olive oil was invented in about 4000 BC, the olive plant itself goes back 20 to 40 million years, and the single-celled organisms, the bacteria in your gut, are the real OGs, first emerging billions of years ago. Without them, you wouldn't and can't exist, so give them some respect. They're your ultimate grandmothers, time-traveling through you. They're not freeloading, though. If anything, we're freeloading off of them. Hey, hey, no fighting, though. Hey, don't fight. Don't fight the bacteria. If you put in the love and effort, you can together become quite the tag team. Olive oil is your secret sauce for lubing up that relationship. The gut bacteria just drink it up, lap up those polyphenols. Then they take the messages sent to them from the polyphenols and send that message onto the brain and other cells in your body, which stimulates autophagy. Oh God, all these words, right? Essentially, autophagy is the recycling of your crusty old brain cells, getting rid of the damaged, 
unusable junk parts that are just taking up space and turning the good parts into something useful. It's like cleaning up and remodeling your house. But in this case, it's your body and brain. Other excellent sources of polyphenols include, but are not limited to, green tea, pomegranate, and cranberries. These guys feed your gut bacteria. Next up, brain food number six, coconut oil. It's time to go to the beach, baby. Beach, beach, let's go to the beach. Let's eat coconut oil. You know, this stuff is great because you could put it anywhere on your body, your skin, hair, and in your mouth. Here's another one of those tests that you can do to see whether something is good or bad for you. Ask yourself this, would you put it on your skin? No? Then don't eat it. Don't put it in your mouth. Would you put it in your mouth? No. Then don't put it on your skin. Coconut oil passes both of these tests. It's full of MCTs, medium chain triglycerides, a kind of fatty acid which break down into ketones. Your mitochondria, your powerhouses, love ketones. It takes them only half the amount of work to generate energy as compared to sugar. Fat is your mitochondria's preferred fuel source. For an even higher concentration of ketones than coconut oil, you can also just get a bottle of MCT oil itself. Your brain has a lot of mitochondria. MCTs are also one of those rare and privileged things that can actually cross the blood-brain barrier, thus hitting your brain even quicker without all the long security checks. It can sneak right in. So you're going to feel this stuff fast and hard, okay? And just to be warned, in the beginning, especially in the beginning, try not to have too much of it, though. It has been known to cause something we call le diarrhea. Ketones are also released during fasting, which helps explain why, despite not eating anything, you often feel a burst of energy, focus, and mental clarity on a fast, even an intermittent fast. MCT oil or coconut oil with coffee or tea is also known to even make this even stronger, provide a more powerful punch of energy while you're fasting. If you want to get real amped up, drink that concoction on a morning that you're intermittent fasting on, and that'll get the engine revved up. Okay, yes, it will. A Useful hack for those days when you really need to get stuff done. Okay, the next food is another healthy fat source. Can you see a trend here? Fats and fiber. Yummy food for your inner planet of microorganisms. What's good for your microbiome and mitochondria is good for your brain. These are your batteries. Charge them up with the foods we've already discussed. And food number seven, avocado. Nutritious and delicious. Mmm. God's gift to the earth and your body, your brain, your skin, every part of you. It has a lot of prebiotic fiber, which your gut buddies will thank you for, as well as a bunch of vitamin C, E, potassium, folate, and oleic acid. Oleic acid is also swimming throughout olive oil, which I forgot to mention. This is the main fat in both avocados and olive oil. It is the king of omega-9s. What? There's such things as omega nines? Oh yeah, things are getting sci-fi now. And I know I'm a broken record. You can nickname me the firefighter. I don't mind. But oleic acid reduces inflammation. Yeah, put it out. Need proof? Look at your skin. Inflammation on the inside equals inflammation on the outside, and vice versa. You are one body, and your internal fires spread all the way to your skin. Avocados can help stop all that, like in inner sunscreen simultaneously helping free you from all those ugly skin problems and irritating mental problems at the same time. Yes, avocados and olive oil are known to improve your mood and overall brain situation. So when you're feeling down or angry or just not quite yourself, before you grab that potentially addictive, expensive, and toxic medicine, grab an avocado or that bottle of olive oil. I'm not anti-medicine. It's great as a last resort for emergency situations, but might as well try giving food a try first. What's the harm? It's cheaper, tastes better, and it's a more convenient long-term solution. Of course, consult your doctor first if you're already on medicine. I'm not advocating suddenly getting off medicine, but don't start if you haven't already. And anyway, I'm not a doctor, but remember this. Your body, your brain will heal itself if you provide it with the right stuff. And meanwhile, of course, stop throwing too many fireballs at it in the form of wannabe foods. You're not a skater. You're a poser. Yeah, all those packaged foods, a bunch of posers, and they're not even really your friends. They don't like you. Ditch them. 
Brain food number eight. Blueberries. Or as Jim Quick likes to call them, brain berries. And so, in the spirit of Jim, repeat that five times while imagining blueberries bursting like raindrops on top of your head. Brain berries falling on my head. Yeah, these guys are, for one, low in sugar, which is rare for a fruit. Berries in general, as well as citrus, like lemons and limes, also tend to be low in sugar. We all know sugar is bad for us. It jacks up your dopamine pathways, gets you all addicted and out of control, and much more likely to partake in other addictive and dangerous substances and behaviors. Because dopamine makes you want more dopamine and more dopamine, it begins to control you, making the decisions for you. Sugar also not only increases dopamine, but increases inflammation, feeds your bad bacteria and cancer cells, and I can go on and on, but we all know these days that sugar is not good for us. Anyway, not only are blueberries generally low in sugar, they are also rich in prebiotics, improving your microbiome. They also have a high concentration of antioxidants and flavonoids, particularly anthocyanins. What? What's that? Yeah, that's the stuff that's responsible for the red, purple, and blue colors found in plants. Pomegranates, purple cabbage, purple cauliflower, what? Grapes, red onions, all of it. It's one of nature's crayons. So you can and should eat that purple crayon. I'm giving you permission. It helps prevent and reduce overall inflammation, cancer, cognitive decline, memory loss, and neurological conditions like dementia. That's its defense game. On offense, it increases blood flow to the brain and BDNF, which helps you grow new neurons. Yeah, these are neurogenesis berries. Increase memory, reaction time, focus, concentration, and all that with blueberries. Blueberries keep your brain cool and calm. Next up, number nine, eggs. I've only really eaten chicken eggs and a few dinosaur eggs, but eggs in general are great for your brain, unless you're allergic to them, of course. What's true for chicken eggs is also generally true for duck, goose, turkey, quail, ostrich eggs, and bird eggs in general. You can even eat crocodile, octopus, or of course, fish eggs, but the nutrition profiles, though still good for your brain, are a bit different. Eggs are particularly famous for their high choline content. That's the name of my grandma, but it's spelled a little different. C-H-O-L-I-N-E. Ha, ah, past the spelling bee finally. Your brain needs to get choline from food, and eggs are the best source of it. There's also some of it in the previously mentioned fish, walnuts, cabbage, and broccoli, though. Your body turns choline into acetylcholine, a neurotransmitter responsible for a lot of things, especially memory. It is also the main neurotransmitter of the parasympathetic nervous system, that part of your nervous system that calms and slows your brain down. That means less stress, less anxiety. If you're going to eat breakfast, this is one of the few breakfast foods that we did get right. But you can eat them any time of the day, obviously. You can even eat them raw, like they do here in Japan. I love it. In fact, you should not overcook them if you want to get their full benefits. They're also a good source of omega-3s, like we mentioned before. There's a reason some people call them mother's nature's, mother nature's multivitamin. Finally, before we take a break for today, let's leave off on a sweet note. Give it up for brain food number 10 sweet potatoes. This might come as somewhat of a surprise to some of you. We usually think of foods like this as being high carb, high sugar, bad for you. But sweet potatoes are not your traditional potato. Even eating a lot of them does not cause that big spike in blood sugar and insulin. And why not? Because they're not regular carbohydrates. They are resistant starches. This means they get a free pass through your small intestine, not getting broken down by the enzymes, and are then fed directly to your good bacteria. The little good guys eat them up, one of their favorite foods. And then what happens? They grow, have babies, and multiply, and prepare food for the mitochondria, leading to a stronger, healthier gut, and a stronger, more efficiently running and high-powered brain. Sweet potatoes, especially those purple Japanese ones, are a gift from the gods. Within just a few days, you can shift from having a tired, 
low-functioning gut and brain to becoming an energy powerhouse. Start providing your body with the right fuel today, and you'll be surprised at how quickly your life can get better. Anyway, that's a lot of information to digest for today. As a recap, the 10 foods are broccoli, onions and garlic, fish, walnuts, olive oil, coconut oil, avocado, blueberries, eggs, and sweet potatoes. Once again, this list is not at all exhaustive, but it's a great place to start. And if your brain's craving more, in the next episode, we're going to bring you another 10 more brain foods to try out. What? That's right. Buy one, get one free. Double the fun. Round two. Peace out. Thank you for listening. And please remember just to follow, subscribe, leave a comment, review, or just share this with a friend. It really helps the podcast out, especially in these early days. And I really very much appreciate it. Spread the brain love. <laughs>